moving on to these. I did start cracking these open and mixed bag. Most of the ones that were marked as 24s do have 24s in them, but they weren't RCA's. They were other manufacturers. Uh, some of them were the newer type tube um, shape, like, uh, like this shape instead of the globe. Uh, but eventually I did find a match set of four 224s. Um, and there's some variations on these like 224, 24As and so on, but these are all the same type. We've got the cool original paperwork here. Then moving on, I got found two 27s again with the paperwork. Alas, the 280 box did not have a 280 in it. Uh, so I'm still on a hunt for one of those. Which leaves me with the 45s. Now, like I said, the, two, the 45 boxes did not have 45s in them. But I uh, started going through the rest of the boxes. And first I came across this guy. Which at first I thought, ah oh, crap, it's a broken tube or the base fell off or something. Um, then I saw the base and says, hey, this is, this, this is, a, this is a 245 tube. <laughs> so, you know, if this is busted, that's a real shame because that's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, I pulled out the tube itself and, yeah, the base is not on it, but this looks in awfully good shape. And when I looked at the leads on the base, it doesn't look like these were ever soldered. So this might be <laughs> a little step beyond new old stock. This was never even fully assembled. So I think all I have to do is carefully thread these four leads through the base, solder them on, and that might have a brand new, so so, so to speak, 45 tube. Uh, sorry, I know they say 245, but uh, I don't know why exactly, but um, early on tubes like, like that have 245s, 345s, 445s, they're all the same thing, it's just a 45 tube. Later on, in, I don't know, maybe the early mid 30s, they just dropped the first digit and they just used the last two. Likewise, you can see a lot of these boxes say 224, but then somewhat later ones say just 24, 24A. The A usually means they have a filament that has a controlled um, heating time. Um, that came into play when they would wire tube filaments in series and if the t and then uh, when you turn it on it'd be like a string of Christmas tree lights and if the filaments didn't light up evenly some of the tubes might get more juice on them than others and they might prematurely burn out so the A's are an improved filament type at least when you get into TVs I know that's what it means I'm not quite so sure about these so anyways, when I was looking around for the 24s, I noticed one of the boxes was kind of bulging. Uh, I can see the box is suddenly deformed here, which, you know, tipped me off that oh, whatever, whatever is in here is a little bit bigger too than was meant for this box. When I unrolled the packaging, in spite of it saying it's a 24A, indeed it's a 45. But this one's totally different. This one does just say Radiotron 45. And kind of a, I've never seen this before. The RCA is at an angle with the R for the radio transform. You know, that's where the R comes from at an angle CA and then 45. I've tested this tube, tested like it's brand new. So I'm going to put this guy over here. There's one more down. So if I can solder the base back on this guy, that fills this slot, which just leaves me with one tube over here. Now, I don't have to use these tubes, all of these tubes are okay. And I can certainly use other manufacturers. I just thought it was cool for such a special radio um, to uh, get all the original type tubes that it came with. And that's for the rest of the box. Well, let's see. Got some national tubes. A couple different styles of the graphics here. And some Sylvania tubes with that old Leaf logo. Some of these are Sylvanias. And they've got that uh, label actually right in the top of the tube. National. Now I did find a Type 80 for National and Sylvania, but these are the newer type, which I've already got one of. What they call these ST or shoulder type tubes or Coke bottle tubes, as opposed to the uh, earlier globe tubes. 
Uh, there's still a bit left to, to sort through in the box, but I've pretty well, I think, found all the prizes. A few old uh, coil forms, too. In case you like for winding a, uh, a coil for a crystal set from scratch. It's kind of neat. There's some instructions inside and stuff. Maybe someday I'll play around with these. In addition to those box tubes, I also got this uh, collection of loose tubes. Well, I started going through and looking at the numbers on these. Uh, they seemed awfully familiar, and uh, I realized why. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, well, I got the Foco tombstone radio up there. Now, that originally was a farm set from about 1935-36. And by farm set, I mean it was meant to run off of um, batteries. Well, inside of that radio, it's been heavily modified to run off of AC. And all the sockets have been replaced with newer sockets, different, different base types, different tube types. So, I mean, so much so that it doesn't work and I can't even figure out what was done to it. Uh, so for the last couple of years, it's just been sitting up there. But... Uh, in the back of my mind, I, I always uh, had this notion to completely rewire it back to the way it was originally. So I've been keeping an eye open for the original set of tubes. And just a couple months ago, I got the last of them. And those are those two boxes you see up there on the left. Wow. <laughs> In this shoe box here, I have uh, at least one, if not two, complete sets of tubes for that radio, <laughs> including even the ballast tube. Um, which uh, is only used in one variation of it. So, well, <laughs> timing is everything, I suppose. At least I have plenty of spare tubes when I start working on that radio, I guess. <laughs> Coming up next, I'm going to be talking about vintage accessories for period TVs like this guy and these. Stay tuned for more.